10.4 miles, eight minutes, four seconds per mile in the Under Armour Hover CGR Mid. This is the first Under Armour shoe that I've ever run in, and this was an absolute pleasure to run in. This winter, I've been looking to branch out and explore as many different winter running shoe options as possible. When I saw this, it definitely caught my eye because Hover is something that I've been meaning to try throughout most of the summer. I just never got around to it, but then I saw this. Appearance-wise, it definitely caught my eye in a good and a bad way. It kind of looks like a fish to me when I look at it, uh, but overall, I am very excited about the look of this shoe. In terms of the midsole, let's talk about that first. The Hover midsole, this was my first experience in it, and I think it's pretty good. When I first put on the shoe, it felt really soft and cushy. Uh, not too soft, like I was sinking in on it, but I also felt like it was giving me a little bit more comfort than say like a pure EVA midsole. So this was a nice change of pace from the other shoes that I've been running in, which have been a lot of EVA. The other thing that was notable about this shoe was that I tried on two different sizes when I went to the Under Armour store to try this on. I tried a nine and a half and also a nine, which is my regular size. In the nine and a half, the shoe felt good. I probably could have walked out of the store with a nine and a half and been very happy. But I also tried the nine, which is my regular true to size. Um, I tried the bigger size because the person I was talking to uh, suggested that I go up a little bit, saying that a lot of people had kind of uh, given him feedback that the shoe was feeling a little bit tight. Uh, and it felt pretty good at the nine and a half, but I decided to try the nine as well, which is my regular size. And I felt like that really fit for me. The shoe, yes, it's very snug, uh, but size nine uh, in terms of where my toes were inside the toe box and where everything was fitting was just right. And I noticed something very different in the mechanics of the shoe when I was wearing the size nine, which is my regular size versus the size up. At size nine and a half, it just felt like a, a soft shoe. At the size nine, my and my actual size and my correct size, I felt like there was a little bit of that toe off feeling that I've seen in a couple other shoes, most notably in the Zoom Fly series, but also in the Hoka Clifton one with its meta rocker that I tried last month. Uh, so I felt a little bit of that. So that was a little bit exciting uh, because it was just something different and not something that I was expecting in this shoe. In terms of the outsole pattern, it's got Michelin rubber. I was looking forward to seeing how this stuff would do uh, on some wintry conditions. So I had a little bit of uh, leftover snow and some hard packed gravel that I ran on. A couple of little icy spots in there, nothing too crazy today, uh, but this tread pattern, I really liked it. I didn't feel like it was too heavy in terms of the amount of rubber, and it does look like a lot of rubber on the shoe. Um, but the lugs are nice and thick, nice wide grooves here, which I'm looking forward to. I think that's gonna do well uh, once the snow gets a little bit more substantial and I have more kind of soft stuff and slushy stuff to try and run through. The other thing that's interesting about this shoe is that the back of the heel seems to be almost kind of pre-worn. Uh, when I run in a shoe, the, pe the way that my foot hits, this area here as well as this area back here tends to see the most of the wear in a shoe in terms of the outsole. And here it's already kind of pre-compressed and curled up a little bit. And so it'll be interesting to see how this wears differently in this area. Already I can see after just this one run, I must have hit a rock or something and I got a little chunk of the rubber already chewed out. But uh, And there's some wear already in it, but it'll be interesting to track how it goes. Uh, in the Under Armour shoes, if you've ever seen them, they all have this kind of like button in the middle. You could push, push it, it's the soft stuff uh, that's part of, I believe there's two different foam materials in here. One is the cushion that is this white stuff. And then on the inside, I don't know why they design it so differently. You could see on the bottom here, it's this color. And it's all supposed to be the same stuff that's also in here, which is seems to be a whiter color with a mesh overlay. So I'm not really sure what's going on with the design, but I do believe that there are two different kinds of uh, foams in here. Going into the back of the shoe, I believe this is TPU back here. Uh, pretty substantial heel counter. It is soft in terms of you know, it's not gonna be super rigid, but it seems a lot heavier than other kind of heel counters that I've seen in shoes recently. In terms of the upper, you've got a no tongue, essentially. Uh, it's just all this uh, very stretchy material, which was nice and warm uh, for my run today. Temperatures weren't terribly cold. They were around the freezing point. Um, so things felt really nice in there. It was a little bit unusual of a sensation for me to run in a shoe that has this kind of uh, high top 
type material on it. Uh, but I think overall I liked it. I'm gonna try to get this in a little bit of snowier conditions on a run later this week uh, and see how this, how this does in terms of keeping other moisture out. It's got a nice little uh, pull tab on the back, uh, which looks nice and is also uh, pretty functional as well. Uh, in terms of the warmth of the shoe, uh, I felt like uh, compared to the Salomon Predict RA, which is not a winterized running shoe, but I had been running in quite a bit leading up to this week, uh, my feet were getting really cold in that shoe because that's a summer running shoe and breathability is a concern and so it just lets the air in. This didn't let the air in and so I felt like this was doing a really good job at keeping temperatures or cold temperatures out, uh, but at no point did I really feel like my feet were getting swampy or too sweaty, uh, which is never usually a concern for a winter running shoe, but whenever they're kind of taking the breathability away of a shoe for winterizing it or weatherizing it, uh, it is something that I'm kind of just checking to make sure that there's no mistakes uh, in that area. So overall, I just had a fantastic time out there. Uh, I've been running a ton of miles lately. Uh, work is really slow with the Thanksgiving holiday here. And so I've had more time and I've been trying to run more miles and my legs are kind of feeling it. A little bit of uh, jelly legs going on here. But in this shoe, uh, the miles just felt great. They were flying by and I was having a really good time uh, running them. So uh, really refreshing, very excited about this shoe. Uh, this is a shoe that I am certain is gonna get a ton of miles. Uh, running them this winter and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, right now at this point, I'm thinking that uh, unless something else comes along or depending on how warm it gets in the end of January, uh, for my winter half marathon, this could be my winter half marathon racing shoe. Although if it is warm enough, I'll probably go to the Vaporflies just because I love racing in that shoe. But um, this is a shoe that I do feel like I can really go fast in, even though it is a little bit of a heavier shoe. I mean, there's a lot of more, there's a lot of material here, but right now it felt really good on my feet and I enjoyed having it there. And so uh, it didn't slow me down too much for a 10 mile run today. Uh, I had miles in the eight minute range for most of the run. Uh, and so I felt pretty good about that. And uh, it's a, an extremely exciting shoe. I'm very happy with this and um, I can't wait to get back out there. Uh, before I go for today, I wanna to talk about today's ch charity runner. Today's charity runner is Kenny Porterfield. He ran the Savannah Marathon earlier this year. It was his first marathon and he ran a 254. That was good enough for eighth overall and third in his age group. Fantastic job. He was doing it to raise money for St. Jude. St. Jude is an organization that provides free medical care uh, for families that go to those hospitals. And so uh, the families that go to a St. Jude hospital never have to worry about paying for the bill. And I think that's fantastic. They also do a tremendous amount of research. And I think St. Jude is an amazing charity. So if you wanna help Kenny, even though he's already run the race, he still has more time to get to his $500 uh, fundraising goal. If you want to help Kenny out, check out the link. It'll be in the description. I've also posted a link to his Strava page. Uh, as part of his fundraising, he posted like a daily and weekly update as to what he was doing. So if you want to see what it takes uh, to be a sub three runner, I think he has uh, laid it out very, very clearly in terms of what you need. Um, that's very much not what I'm doing. And so it's very nice to see what other people are doing to get to the levels that they are laid out as clearly as he has. So uh, congratulations to Kenny and thank you for running uh, for a charity. What I try to do here is I try to spotlight a different charity runner every day, give them $5 and tell you guys about it. So in case you wanna see what they're doing uh, or uh, what charities they're running for, you guys can go take a look at that. That's all I have for you guys for now. Thanks so much for watching today's video and I'll see you on the next one. Yo, what's going on?